Thursday afternoon chat. Your favorite artists with Jay Off. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome today's guest? And he is one of my faves. Um, is uh, Mr. Matt Marr. Thank you for taking a moment. Thank you for having me. Yes. You know, I gotta say, I'm really jealous of your tattoos. I don't have tattoos. I don't. I don't talk about those. <laughs> I should have worn my long sleeve. No, they're incredible. Uh, well, they're they, awesome. These are scriptures. Yeah, that's what I love about it. I can tell. I don't know if it's my personality, but um, maybe I need to hide God's word in my heart, not my skin. But they do actually, and actually, this isn't a Catholic thing, but I think, you know, just even a lot of Catholic, um, how back in the day, how just even the four, the stages of the cross, like, is very visual. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. I, there are times where if I'm not connecting, with, if I'm just in this lull, these are all scriptures that have at some point in my life rocked me. And the reason they made it to the exterior of my body is because I will physically go touch them. And when I touch them, I instantly start going, Psalm 52, the Lord's unfailing love, like an olive tree blooming in the house of God. I, they are all throughout my arms in a place where I know I can see them. They've rocked me at one point in my life and they can rescue me in a moment where I'm trying to connect. So I wouldn't suggest it for everybody, but no, I love it. I've always wanted to get them, but I can't because I have a clotting disorder. I have hemophilia. Oh, so like if you I can read minds. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I if I got a tattoo, it would just be an ink blot, basically, because oh. it's like because it takes longer for my blood to clot. So it's like if I went in and be like, I want like some really cool tree and it's the tree of life reference in revelation yeah it just would look like grimace from oh, mcdonald's which is cool too yeah yeah exactly that's old school <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> is that grimace yeah, no it's psalm no, 52 it <laughs> <laughs> that was my next guess that's, that's funny <laughs> All right, let's uh, we have two things to talk about. There's a green screen behind us. In years past, we would have the artists just tell us what they want as a backdrop. Now, I don't know what's on that green screen. Like you it. don't know. We're going to find out at the end in this envelope. The film crew has put it in here. Okay. What's behind us? Incredible. So um, this spinny wheel is just full of just ways to direct us where to go with faith questions or fantasy questions or or ones specific to Matt Marr. Okay. Um, so why don't we lead off, just give it a spinny poo. Yeah, I was like, uh, spinny? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I feel like I'm in the prices, right? That's everybody's yeah, that dream, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, fantasy. Fantasy. Okay. I If I was able to secure the greatest actors in the world with an unlimited avatar budget and the best director in the world, and I, and I said, pick a bit of scripture that would be an, you know, spare no expense film to finally come to life, not in a cheap, oh, let's, you know, like Moses or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what story would you love see brought to life with CGI and the best oh, actors? Genesis chapter six, the okay. story of the Nephilim. It's like, it's like <laughs> begging to be a science fiction. It's like begging to be a movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've read it, but remind me. It's like the fallen angels came down and like, like a, like it's like some some theologians say that's that's the Bible's way of trying to incorporate like the whole Greek system of myths yeah. of like you know Zeus and Hercules and the, you know the Titans the you know the 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 Roman gods or whatever and so the whole idea was like fallen angels came down yeah. and they like interacted with women and then this like weird race of beings and that's what basically inspired God to just do the flood he's like all right I got to do I got to get rid right, of this right. So thing, I mean, Darren Aronofsky tried it with Noah, yeah, but that went a bit sideways. Yeah, it it just it was a bit it was a bit weird. It so was tough I, to defend that one on yeah, the air. I think you got to get the guys like who did Independence Day. Like right. you kind of got to go over the top with it. All sci-fi, you can't mix. You can't go Kirk Cameron meets Kirk. No, Kirk, no, no, no. no Kirk, you can't. It's too confusing. You just got to go one hundred percent. I was gonna say you can't mix <laughs> Kirk Cameron and Captain Kirk. It just <laughs> Captain Kirk Cameron. <laughs> You got to go full sci-fi go, or yep, full faith. 100%. <laughs> I've, I've been telling people, you know, who was it that told me a great trailer they'd already been thinking? Mike Donahue. I asked him a question about movie, what would be a great series. He, he had a whole trailer in his head of all the things that David had gone through in his life. Feels mm -hmm. like people have kind of touched on that story a little bit, but never went full like an avatar budget to give it its proper i think the story of david would be definitely one i think the story of paul yeah and gosh. that would be more compelling i think that would be more drama focused yeah. but there's still still some praise like pretty crazy oh yeah stuff that he saw like it would get broken out of jail yeah like i think there's and and that would be like probably like more 
yeah, like more drama right. with some really cool s- special effects. Oh, yeah. it's A lot of these Bible stories, are CGI was is perfect for a lot of these. Oh, yeah. Because they aren't, they are breaking, they break, t- uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, they're miracles oh, yeah. that happen. You need CGI to pull off these Bible yeah, stories. Yeah, because it's stuff that happens outside the convention of yeah. like, of our understanding of the natural world. It's, that's what makes it supernatural. Yeah. So that would, that would be, that would, that would be definitely interesting. Yeah. Gosh. All right. Let's go. Let's give a spin here. Okay. We've got prizes on there. We've got general questions. Let's go general. Uh, general. Okay. Okay. I have started uh, Matt carrying ibuprofen with me. I'm living with a broken finger from six months ago. That's just now part of my life because I'm too busy to go. I woke with a, felt like I tore a rotator in my sleep the other day. <laughs> like just things keep happening where I I was uh, checking on my son the other day and I laid down for just a couple minutes. And when I was getting up, my lower back felt like somebody had put a ton of bricks on it. I'm like, what is happening to me? So I now carry ibuprofen with me wherever I go. It's just my new thing. Whenever something hurts, I take it. Never would have done that 10 years ago. Um, do you carry something with you all the time now out of necessity that maybe you never used to back in the day? Oh, I mean, I'm like, yeah. So, I mean, what I would say is like right now, the th- I think the thing I carry with me is stevia. So I don't, okay. I don't do sugar. So yeah. I usually like, I, I found this, like I'd gotten this sh- shoulder sling. Yeah. And my wife one day saw it and she's like, that's a fanny pack. I'm like, it is not a fanny pack. I do not wear a fanny pack. It's a European man bag. She, and I'm like, it's a shoulder strap. She's just, I'm like, it's a shoulder bag. She's like, well, it's a fanny pack you're wearing around your shoulder. <laughs> so you can call it whatever you want. But usually in that thing, uh, I'll usually have stevia because okay. it's like typically you go places and you don't have it. It's a natural, it's from a, pl- a tree or. Yeah, I think it's, okay. a, a, yeah, I, I'm not sure. It All could right. be from the core of the moon. All I know yeah. is that apparently it's better for me than sugar. <laughs> right. You are you got me thinking more about your shoulder pack. It yeah. It could be a lot of things. It could be a, it could be a cummerbund. Uh, I mean, <laughs> cummerbund. depending on where you move it on your it's, body, it's it changes 100%. Yep. the definition. Yep. <laughs> a neck traction device. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this one specific to you, Matt, and I, I was telling the crew, I said, I, I've had you on so many times and we've, we've danced around a couple of things. I'm like, there's an actual question I really want to hit you with that is, um, I, I just don't care if, about any, yeah, we're, yeah. we're going here. Yeah. Um, what being, uh, being a Catholic, what is the part of the Protestant church you wish Catholics would incorporate and what is the thing that the Catholics do so well you feel like I'm missing out on? Wow, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think uh, what I think most a lot of Catholics would agree with me that I think the thing that uh, a lot of non-Catholic Christians do better is hospitality. Hmm. It's just like a general sense of welcoming. I think I think that. Um, uh, that sense of when people come in, mm-hmm. they feel seen. They someone said good morning to them. I mean, you know, we have the sign of peace. Yeah, you know, d- literally during the liturgy. But um, you don't say. <laughs> but sometimes people don't. That, that's it. And it's literally it's like three quarters of the way through. So it's like you've been standing there around going like, I don't know what to do. I don't know whether yeah. to stand or to sit or to kneel or put my hand on my head or. <laughs> so if you're visiting, so I I do think like I always say like hospitality. Uh, and a sense of welcome is something that's really, really important. And it doesn't all have to happen in the service. It could happen outside the service. Yeah. Well, even a lot of churches, uh, I think especially in the South, even afterwards, the whole, um, how they'll do a food, like everybody brings a, what's that called? Where you bring a pot, like a potluck is potluck. a big, almost like it's part of the service afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and you know, that I think, uh, I think probably where I grew up, there, there was usually, there were a lot of social activities mm. with church, but, um, yeah, I think it was that, you know, and I think just overall, like probably focus on personal discipleship. The idea of like, as a Christian, like you gotta be reading your Bibles. You need to be praying. You need to be connected in, uh, 
a group, a support group with other people who, you know, there's a sense of transparency and honesty and mm-hmm. accountability. The other six days of the week. Oh, the other yeah. six days a week and not just an hour, you know. And I think the thing that, and um, I've actually been, I think a lot about this, um, is that I just think that sense of mystery mm-hmm. and that sense of reverence is really, really important that I think older an older denomination like Catholicism tends to still hold place for. Mm-hmm. You know, people always say when they walk into an older church like that, they feel a sense of awe and a sense of connection mm-hmm. um, with the past. And I think that that's really, really important. And I think that uh, that that sense of mystery and awe, it sort of holds space for tension. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times it's like, I know Jesus and I'm following Jesus, but my life's not perfect. And what do you do when things go wrong? And sometimes it's like in a world of like really fast, easy solutions and answers. And it's like, all you need to do is just do this thing now and everything's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who are like, that's not true. Yeah. You know, like it, um, Jesus said in the world, you will have trouble. Mm -hmm. But then he said, but I leave you my peace. Yeah. And I think that that sense of like of our the the worship that we have as the body of Christ having being a container for something that really there's a sense of mystery and a sense of transcendence here of like, mm-hmm. you know, God really does inhabit the praises of his people. So how do we reflect that yeah. in what we're doing on Sunday morning? Can I add some flavor to the dish you just served? Yeah. Um, I grew up in the Assemblies of God Church like it was very charismatic. Yep. And knew the Bible, knew Jesus from, so it was always just, every kid knows about this. And then I went to Ireland for two years with YWAM. And so me and this guy, he was studying for the Catholic priesthood. And I was just there on mission with YWAM. And so Sunday morning would hit, we'd walk into downtown Dublin together. He would take a left on uh, O'Connell Street and head down to, to Mass. I would take a right to Trinity Church which was, or it was a Christ church. And it, so it was not Catholic, but it's very similar. Mm -hmm. And I learned something coming from my evangelical assemblies of God church where nothing was, uh, nothing was very awe. It was all just, ah, we're here to worship Jesus. I learned something very, there was something very special in that church that was not Catholic, but it was very similar to Catholic. When I would go up for communion in the stained glass of that church were so worshipful to me that at we, I went to many masses after that throughout Ireland, yep. and it was the same thing. There was something about the effort, time, money spent to make that place so full of awe. It's something I did not grow up with, and it was very special to me that I need that. Coming from a childhood where you know Bible stories and just you forget the power and the reverence, I needed that in my life and it's been a part of me ever since stained glass brought me to a place of worship Mm. and you could take it as, Oh, they're decorating the building. But no, I took it as this is the house where we come to meet with him. Why would we not make it a place of, of reverence and beauty? Yeah. And I think it's like, it's reductive to say, just say they were decorating the building. It's like, yeah, they, they were decorating the building, but they were trying to, with the way they decorated the building, remind people that eternity is waiting for him Mm. and that in eternity in heaven all they're doing is worshiping god yeah and so it's like how do we actually use everything at our disposal to remind people to lift their eyes and lift their gaze out of the junk that they're going through and so when they step in on sunday mornings like worship is not something that you have to rev up like an old car engine it's a living breathing reality it's literally happening right now and it's like all and that's the whole point of all this stuff is to literally get our gaze out of ourselves back up to him and be reminded of the how utterly beautiful and Mm. utterly transcendent god is even in the midst of like all the boredom and like you know beautiful moments of life but 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 difficult moments so yeah i i mean i agree with you that's to me it's that that and i think it's a sense of history you know like i remember standing outside this cathedral in Cologne. It's the first time, it was 2005, it's the first time I'd been in front of like, you know, before the Second World War, Germany was known. They had all these big churches and they all got bombed to smithereens. Mm. But the cathedral in Cologne is one of the ones that's left. And um, it took 750 years or something to build. Jeez. 
And so you think about the legacy of one generation going, laying the stone, the first stone yeah. and going, I'm going to die. And this thing isn't built. Yeah. And I've got to hand it down to my, to the next generation and they're going to do their work. And then it's still not going to get built. Right. And, and to me, I think that's one thing that's missing from the church now is that even in the work that we're doing missionally in the world, we're so caught up in immediate results mm -hmm. and not thinking about the legacy of like, we're actually building something. We're laying a foundation for something that we won't even see the fruit of mm -hmm. it's centuries into the future. Yeah. Jeez, that's crazy. I think 700 years before this moment right here. Like, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know. We can't even trace who came to America first in my family. And that was only <laughs> yeah. a couple hundred years ago. Yeah. Add another five. And that's who laid that first brick of this church. Right. Yeah. Gosh, it's crazy. Let's go into this is another Matt Marr specific one. Right. Um, it, I had you on this show probably mo a week or months after your father passed. And mm. it's been quite a few years now, hasn't it? Five, yeah, it's been five years. Five years. So I think I was one of the first interviews you did after your father passed where it's like the emotion was still raw. And um, I forget the song that was written that you ran into Ed Cash and you're like, just hey, as I am, just as I am. Yeah. So that was kind of, I was the first one to ask you about that song and you hadn't told anybody that story yet. Everything was raw. How, uh, five years after your father passes, how, uh, did that change? Did anything change the way you parent when you lose a parent? Does it change the way you parent at all? Yeah. I, all, all of it. Yeah. Um, so I made, I, after the Christmas, after my dad had passed, I started writing songs cause I was working through the grief of the first Christmas without my dad. And that became the album, the advent of Christmas. Right. Cause my dad loved Christmas music. Um, and, and, but even since then, it's like my youngest child, Callum, he looks like a Mar. He yeah. doesn't like my wife, beautiful. She has very striking features and I can see her in both of my kids, yeah. my, my two older kids face and Callum, like my wife goes, he looks like your dad. Like we found photos of my dad when yeah. my dad was a kid and he looks just like my dad and he's got my dad's stubbornness, right. and, but also his charm right. and his sweetness. So there's this thing that happens when you're a parent of your parenting, your kids, and all of a sudden they do something and you're like, that's my mom. <laughs> right. That's my dad. Wait, <laughs> how is this happening? Yeah. This is so weird. And I think it's, I think in some ways it's God's design to make you appreciate more the sacrifice of what your parents mm -hmm. went through to raise you, yeah. r regardless of the outcome. Right. And regardless of the, you know, the, the amount of relationship you had with your parents, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, I think how God reconciles in some ways your childhood. Yeah. When you become a parent yourself. Uh, I feel like the redemptive story of Christ is he's repairing all the ways in which, um, you know, your parents are human and they're not perfect yeah. and they make mistakes. Right. And, and I think for me, it's definitely, there's definitely been this like redemptive side where even now, like my mom was out this Christmas and just, just getting to tell her like, man, I had no idea yeah. how much you sacrifice. And that's the thing I wish I could tell my dad was like, I had no idea how much of a bear you had on, or like a, like a bear you had on his shoulders with anxiety. Yeah. I'm so sorry you went through that. That right. must've been like brutally difficult. Yeah. And it's okay. Like that, that I know that my dad probably had so many regrets. Yeah. And I think it, that it only, it, you know, that's what the grace and mercy of God can do. Right. Can you like, there's like, I go through this with my show. If I feel like, Oh, I, I heard the spirit whisper this to me. That's going on the air today. But then there's other moments where I'm like, uh, -uh that is, he's working something on me that was not meant for the show today. Mm -hmm. This is a building, like whether it's learning about his faithfulness and he's been there through addiction and marital struggles, all these things. That's for me. That's not meant to share today. Um, kind of like that when it comes to as a songwriter versus um you know just being a christ follower yeah so far in 2023 can you already tell a theme that's being whispered to you that keeps hitting over and over 
everybody kind of had the same answer to me um, out of the pandemic. It was always what they learned. And now that we're not talking about that, more of a just what is being whispered to you so far in 2023 from a you can tell something, you can hear a chisel kind of chipping at something. Yeah, I mean, for me, the thing coming into this year is just stay close to Jesus. Mm. Like, don't let go. Right. Um, and a, sort of like the realization of like, like the closer I stay to him, the more it's like being in the middle of a boat when it's rocking. Mm -hmm. Like you're like, or like when they say when a tornado comes, you get to like the most underground, you find yourself next to like a real sturdy place. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what God's whispering to me right now. Not like there's some sense of foreboding, mm -hmm. I think some of it's just time and life and like yeah. age, you know what I mean? Right. And age of my kids. Yeah. I, life's definitely not getting simpler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, for sure. <laughs> it's just not. Yeah. And I don't think it will. Do you remember the eighties? Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like you're, look, you, you go past 40 and then you, there's this thing where you start knowing more people in heaven. Right. Than you do on earth. Yeah. That's started happening for me. The subject of death seems to come up more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, some of it's with your parents. Yeah. Like that's the first thing. Yeah. And, um, even just the, like the, the circle of like, they parent you yeah. so you can parent them. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I hear that. It's uh. it's so what I would say is just like the thing, the gentle reminder is just, Hey, just stay close to me. Yeah. And, and other than that, like I, um, I, for, for me personally, I've felt a new sense of renewed freedom. I find a lot of people, I've connected with a lot of artists who the hardest thing for them that they haven't, no one's really collectively, or no one's really done a large scale conversation about it. But by far and large, every artist I know, the biggest thing that they have wrestled with is the role of social media in their lives. Right. And the thing that no one seems to, with a larger, like what I wish someone like a Justin Bieber would talk about yeah. is to simply say, we're all tired of working for Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we're all going to work every day. Yeah. And this thing that was originally sold to us as a tool that can help us is actually just a thing. It's a factory. Yeah. And we're all working in the same factory. Yeah. And we're literally like, we're the product. Yeah. And we're the worker. And our payment is gratification. And our payment is 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 literally anxiety, <laughs> right. comparison, stress. It's everything that as a believer, I said no to. Yeah. When I said yes to Jesus, I said no to a life of comparison, to a life of I wish what would have happened if I would have done this. I literally, it's like that. I love the line in scripture. He says, I set my face like Flint. Like, like the world behind me, the cross before me. Yeah. Like, and it's the weirdest thing to be, 20 something years into your life with Jesus and find yourself in a pandemic and the thing you're, you're anxious about, it's not the pandemic. Yeah. It's not like the, the political instability. Yeah. It's not the realization of how much racism is still a thing. It's how many clicks did my, <laughs> did my post get? <laughs> and it's just sort of so bizarre. And so yeah. I've like the thing that going into this year that I, that I, I really have, like every artist that I've talked to, they've all said the same thing, which is they're like, I can't, I have to care less about social media, yeah. which feels like suicide. Yeah. Because once again, we're all stuck working in a factory. Yeah. It's like, it's like a dystopian future. And I'm yeah. waiting for the tipping point. What's the point in which enough people finally say, we don't like, there's, because he lives, there's a better life worth living. Yeah. Like there's a better way of doing this. Like as the body of Christ, there's a better way of yeah. making stuff that's redemptive, that can change the world. By the way, I'll plug your songs. You don't need to do uh, it. No, no, no. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Like it was this thing of like, that was the thing even too. Like when I, when, when I said yes to Jesus, it was like, like don't promote yourself. Yeah. Like that, like to promote yourself felt like betraying the gospel. Yeah. And then now all of a sudden you're on a platform where like yeah. people are like, I guess you got to go talk about yourself now. Right. And you're like, this feels so awkward for me. Yeah. It's got to be, 
like my awkwardness surely my awkwardness is showing right. like <laughs> you're gonna love this is the first time that zoolander is going to be mentioned in a spiritual text <laughs> because there's a line when you remember hansel so hot right now yeah. hansel he's he's like i've always been more curious about what bark tastes like and <laughs> yes. i think yes. of that line because i've become the guy that i i won't I, my phone will be in my backpack all day and like hey, have you seen that tick and i'm like it's in here and I've grown used to, even at night, and it's that Hansel line that really struck with me, being interested in what bark tastes like is what he said, which is a silly line. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But I've started to get to the point where I want to feel a breeze on my face. I want to feel things that are real. And that maybe that's because I've struggled with anxiety and addiction. But I need to get back to feeling things that are real in this time, in this moment, because everything in that phone causes me nightmares. No, it's 100%. We're men. We're human beings. Yeah. We're not human doings. Yeah. And like we're, we're, you know, it's like all you can do is be where you are yeah. and be in the moment. Yeah. So what I would say going into 2023, it's just wanting more of that, of wanting more encounters with God that I don't have to talk about on a platform. Yeah. They can just live in the memory, the, like the living memory of faith that is my heart. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. All right. Name that artist. All right. Let's go with, I have some clips of your fellow faith-based artists here. And uh, it's not them singing, it's them speaking. Okay. So here we go. Here's the first one here. Just, I'm going to say a date here, and I'm going to tell you why it's important. Danny Gokin. Yeah, good job. All right. Let's go female. Spirit of fear, but a power in Ellie. Ellie Holcomb. Are you on a pirate ship? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so much gravel. I love it. Yeah. Okay, here's a good one for you. So, like, I would sneak out of the sanctuary to go watch the game. Matthew West. Good, good. All right. Here's a good worship one for you. Uh, but I think I'm like, I've always been the kind of guy that looks back and, 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 and Josh? In hindsight. Josh? Uh, no. Wait, do it again. It, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but I think I'm like, I've always been the kind of guy that looks back and, 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 and in hindsight. Yeah. Worship. Chris? No, not no. Chris Brown. California. I think I'm like, I've always been the kind of guy that looks back and, and. Oh, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it looks, it sounds like he has a cold. Yeah, it's the phone, I think. It's he, the phone. He's on the phone. Here you go. Big part of like what I've been aiming to write at, it's Psalm 34, 18. It just says the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Hold on. Big part of like what I've been aiming to write at, it's Psalm 34, 18. It just says the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Think, think Jesus culture. Uh, Chris. Oh, is it McClarney? Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. It sounds like he has a cold. <laughs> okay. One more here for you. Let's go. Let's go right here. Yeah, no, here's what the joke's about. And <laughs> imagine someone funny saying this. Josh Baldwin. Yeah. I can hear his beard. Yeah. You can actually hear Josh Baldwin's beard in his voice. Listen, I, I mean, if I, I could write a song about it and you'd love it. <laughs> what was that conversation we were talking about? Um, oh, he could walk into to Bethel. Oh, no, he was trying to tell me. He ran into Nate Bargatze, the comedian at the county fair. Yeah. And and uh, he's like, yeah, Nate Bargatze said this joke. And when, when Josh Baldwin said the joke to us, it was just not funny at all. And I was like, that was the joke? And he's like... Look, I just told you what was in the joke. I'm not a comedian. I could write a song about it, and you would love it. <laughs> okay, let's spin that and do prize. So satisfying. There we go, prize. Prize. All right. Ooh. So this closet back here has a ton of gifts that we're giving to every artist we have this winter and spring. Um, so do, you, do, do I need yeah, to go? Okay, just, I'm going to go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you want to grab there? Oh, is it wrapped? They're all wrapped, yeah. All right. The washer and dryer are not part of the... All right, I'm just going to grab the big floofy one. Okay. I'm trying to think, what was that one? Uh, don't shake it. <laughs> 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 no, 
don't shake it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um. Oh! Yeah. Towels! <laughs> I love it. Shower towels. That's great. Now, if I recall, what is on the tag there? Performance bath towel. I wanted to go with performance what? bath towels. <laughs> I don't know what, what that exactly means. What exactly does that mean? <laughs> Well, there's regular well, bath towels and there's performance bath towels. There you go. <laughs> Good. So enjoy. I will. And tell your wife we said hello. I, I'm 100%. <laughs> yep. Let's um let's grab an envelope here and find out what we've been talking in front of the green screen. Ooh, I like this. And I don't know what's on this. All right, we're gonna find out. All right. We. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, we've been talking in front of a used car lot. Yes. Which maybe I could go find a minivan. Oh, in. yeah. <laughs> Since was, ours is dying. This was prophetic. This was prophetic. It was great. You need to stop at CarMax on yeah, your yeah, way yeah, home. Yeah, on the way home. Somebody will greet you. This is like Paul. <laughs> go to the rooftop. Yeah. Somebody there. <laughs> oh, Bible, Bible humor. Oh, Yay. Great. Um, as uh, just new songs kind of trickle out uh, this year, I just as a big fan, I'm looking forward to new stuff coming. So thank you, as always, for the time. Love your heart and love you uh, being able to drop by today. Thanks for having me. The Thursday Afternoon Chat. Your favorite artists with Jay Off.